And welcome to Tinker B T. This is a vlog entry. And I'm not gonna come back to reading for a while. I decided that I am still working on myself, healing and such. But if you're interested in hearing a little bit of what I have to share, just make yourself comfortable and open your mind and you might relate. You might have similar situations that you're living through or you've already processed. Maybe you've come a longer way than I have. I don't know. Anyway, let me tell you a little story about my red flags that I ignored. So the time was, it was pre-Halloween and it was 2021, okay? So it was after the whole Rona thing, right? And I met somebody that I had a very good conversation with via text on screen. And it went well. Now I don't usually get into these debates back and forth pages worth, right? I'll say something back and forth to people now and then. But nothing as lengthy as this turned out to be, okay? So the person was very... Um, Let's say we were kind of meeting halfway or midpoint in conversation to the point that this person had told me I needed to speak to them in Instagram or uh, Discord or one of these apps where you talk, right? And I was against doing this. Didn't have the app. So they coerced me into meeting up with them. But it took me a while, so it wasn't immediate. I disappeared from them for some time. The red flags really were not about that. This person was kind of pushy. Yes, a little bit. Okay? Taking me out of my comfort zone. Which is good. But the red flags weren't there. So let me just say that this person and I connected. Okay? And it took a while before the connection actually took off. But there was another life kind of... It was like past life kind of feeling, a connection that was otherworldly between us. I can't explain it. But you would say maybe on-screen chemistry. But I feel that it was more of a, a engaging of minds, understanding each other on a layer that is beyond the 3D, okay? So if you've been on the twin flame journey, you understand what I'm speaking about. You might have met your twin flame in person. Maybe online. I met somebody who I thought before was my twin flame. Some years before. Now it's been nine, I think. And that was actually a soulmate. But that's another story. I want to share with you the red flag I had with my twin. So when we first got involved with each other, we did become serious, it seemed, right? On my side it was. I had been walking away from my marriage, okay? I was still living with and involved with my husband, but not physically. It gets a little convoluted, and I'm not going to go into too many details. It's very personal. But my husband and I were not having relations, if you will. I had been practicing a bit of celibacy, if you could even imagine being married and being celibate. But it was a matter of, no, we weren't sharing ourselves with one another. And there was still love there. It just wasn't your typical marital love, okay? Well, anyway, when I got involved with this twin, they got to know each other too. It was rather weird, but there was a connection between me, me and my twin that I couldn't deny. But he had admitted to me, this is red flag number one, he had admitted to me that he was a... Uh, let's say, addicted to porn, addicted to sex. Okay, so he told me that I was the person whom he connected with, that I kind of cured him of his addiction, that I was enough for him. Okay, I would be enough for him. I should have known right there he was talking to my ego that there is no way that anyone could be a cure of somebody's addiction that they need to work that out. Well, I tried to wrestle that one and many other things with him. Telling him that you're unhealed, and he kept saying to me, well, you can heal me. You're healing for me. 
Well, that may be so, but he didn't want to heal himself as well. He didn't want to do the work besides me helping him with the work. I was working on healing myself because obviously I have a lifelong amount of healing to do too. I'm not perfect. I have a lot of um, wounds, right, um, that I was trying to heal. So I have healing capabilities within me, but I have healing to do too. So when we found each other, he wanted to open my wounds by having me share my stories. Okay, and doing this was another red flag. I showed so tremendous amount of vulnerability towards him. He actually, when I think about it in retrospect, let me do most of the sharing. I got some things from him too, but he let me do a lot of sharing. So red flag number two was he exploited my weaknesses. He let me really let him in where I should not have let him in to my secret garden, if you will. Okay, so my red flags were just continuously growing. I was vulnerable with him. I let him really um, delve into parts of myself I hadn't explored in a while either. So I'm only going to share some of this, but let me say, when we got involved with each other, he started letting things out of the bag about because we were um, by coastal, we're like living on totally different coastlines. And so the distance is great between us. And we were going to try and, you know, make that meeting. It looked like we were going to merge into actually being together. We were speaking of living together. But he was future tripping on me. He was future promising things he could not deliver on. He made me believe things that would not be true. Okay. I started realizing this because he started like dropping little tidbits to me and he didn't realize that I was recognizing him doing it he would say things like um, time we'll, we won't be able to by then because we won't have you know like time is going to run out there's going to be something that's going to happen almost telling me that there was like another person in his story that I wasn't aware of that he was like two timing or three timing I don't know what on me okay when he only had my husband that you could consider maybe competition, which was not, but I could understand if he thought he was, but there was no other competition whatsoever. And he had a very inflated ego. He was what we would refer to as toxic masculinity. So he did not like me talking to any other masculines at all. I don't even think he wanted me to have feminine friends either. So he wanted me isolated completely. Well, my point is, I tried to be loyal to him, so I did. I honored things. I even went against him. But I even isolated myself to the point that I lost friends over him. Only one time in my lifetime this happened in my past. I had a, um, a boyfriend that I met when I was a young woman, 18, 19 or so. And that man made me isolate myself from everyone, even my mother, my best friend, everybody. Uh, he was no good for me. He really did turn out to be really bad for me. And this man, my karmic twin is what I call him now, but he may very well be my actual twin still. I don't know. I'll go down that vein another time. I have cord cut it. I have done things. You're not really supposed to. But I recognize that if he heals and that he recognizes me to be his twin still, but she might not. <laughs> okay, I'm jumping around. We are not in each other's lives at all, okay, right now. No contact for 14, 15 months straight now, okay. It's dead, completely. I don't even think he knows that I have a heartbeat. I don't think he cares, okay. And that's fine. My ego is out of this. When I speak of this right now, it does hurt. Yes, that would be more my ego than anything. My heart knows that there was a time when our 5D versions were in touch with each other. But... I don't think I'm what he wants in the 3D. First of all, I'm too old. We have a distance in our ages. He might have found me enticing. I don't know. He claimed to have. I think there was more to it than I realized. But the red flags that I speak of are he didn't seem to really be honoring of me as he pretended to. Because there was like a timeline he was telling me that was going to be running out. So I started thinking that it felt like a spell had been put upon me 
because I was so very involved in him, so very vulnerable to him, and open and loyal to him. But I didn't feel that there was a return in this particular energy. Yeah, he put a lot of time into me. He did. He kind of alluded to him using a spell or manifestation abilities to bring me in because he said something to the um, effect of him creating me which no he did not create me but yeah if he used magic to bring me in conjure me to him in the first place then he felt he had put work into me so then later he would put work on me as well I had felt a connection between him I can't explain the bond was terribly strong trauma bonding okay so I had red flags going on I further went down the rabbit hole with him letting him control me in ways I had not let even my husband do over many years um, I have to admit I felt dangerously uh, in in an I can't say it the words I'm trying to say I can't physically say because my mouth is messed up still first of all second of all I can't really get the words and so I'm still working things off of me right I've been working really hard at healing that's part of why I don't want to read because it's true a lot of us do have the same stories kind of playing out a little differently but at the same time so when you get a reading it might apply collectively to a lot of people okay but I don't want to pull my energies in or even close so I really want to shed more of this before I get into more reading I have been getting downloads this is true that I should be sharing with others and I've been told to but I really want to make sure I am cleansed and absolved of some of these things that I held on to for so long or held on to me okay so the red flags I should have paid attention to. Now, I've grounded and I've done a lot of um, research, meditating, feeling, guiding, self-exploration, going into my shadow side, uh, merging shadow and light side. I've been really trying to heal, okay? But the red flags are something I wish I had really paid attention to, and I did not. So what I'm trying to say here is if you can impart anything from what I'm saying, don't ignore red flags because later you might be feeling like, well, why didn't I listen to myself? You know, my gut, my intuition, my instincts were telling me, warning me. Okay, my first warning was not to get with him one-to-one -one because it would lead to trouble. Now it did. So when we would talk to each other, another red flag, what they call as receipts, the messages, pictures, everything that goes in the text, you know, area where you're conversing, the room. He would delete it all. And he decided to pack his bags and take off on me and block me and say, that's enough, I'm gone. And then he would come back. So it would be ghost, you know, flip the, the switch on with the lights, off with the lights, or lock the door, you know, or, uh, I don't know, he would be in and out of my life over and over and over again. This went on a lot, right? So I would liken that to waterboarding. If you're going to go with an emotional kind of like liken to that, you know, like say a person thinks that they're getting life supply and then their life supply is being cut off. So like he got me attached to him, right? To the point that I would feel like he was part of me, that other half. So the red flag should have been that if he cared about me, would he have done that? And also, would there have been a timeline? Also, when it finally come to the ending point, you know, and any time he wanted to fight with me, it would be like, oh, I could do better than you. You're, you're fat, you're ugly, you're this, you're that, whatever, right? So he would um, apply his power to uh, his heartstrings to me accordingly to the the physical side, the ego side of who I am, who I am to him or not to him, right? So if he loved me, would he have done that? No, I don't think so. So he was exploiting my weaknesses, those things that would be flaws that I would feel within myself that really are inconsequential to another. They should be most important to myself. So if I have value in myself, they should not have mattered. 
I should have felt strong enough to say, hey, wait, if this person really thinks enough of me, would they really be applying these lowbrow things, these tactics towards me by removing their love for me based on these things that are very superficial, right? So that was another red flag. And that was an unhealed thing for him to do anyway, being childish, right? So I'm not exploiting this to berate him. I'm exploiting this right now to show how I was unhealed and unknowingly, easily seduced by, you know, the openings that I had offered him, those auric fields that were weak, right? Those areas in myself that needed to be tended to and healed, that I wasn't ready yet to um, delve into this relationship. Obviously, if I hadn't stepped out of the already uh, committed contract that I was in with the previous, my spouse, okay, I found my twin at the wrong time, obviously. Now that's what people do go through, right? So I'm not going to berate myself, and it's your, you know, your business to think as you wish, but I'm not opening this for engagement or um, opinions. You have a right to an opinion, but please keep it to yourself, okay? I am sharing this because twins do meet at very vulnerable times, raw times, at the wrong time. Okay, so yes, many of us find out we meet up with each other when we're married. This is a true story. Now, I have yet to resume what it is that I'm supposed to take away or learn from this event that I went through. It was a a very, very painful journey I went through with him. And I don't foresee that he's done learning his journey. I have a feeling he is on it with his first wife. He may have met somebody and got married again. I don't know. And he might not have been divorced and he might have lied to me. I still don't know. There are a lot of things that have come to me that I, I kind of wonder about. But I do think he played me a lot. I tried telling him I knew he was playing me. But the end of the line was when he told me that he had choices, lots of them. He met himself a bunch of people who were better than me, as he put it. Okay, that may be fine and good. I hope the best for him, whatever he decided to engage with, whoever it was he feels was better than me. I really hope he found happiness. I really do. Um, but that was when I said this the end of the line, that I'm not going to go down this rabbit hole anymore. Because when he decided that it was done, he didn't even think of how I felt. When every time I ended it with him, my heart couldn't let him go. It just couldn't. And I think it's because I was too weak to realize that my self-worth should have been important. My self-love should have been important, which he'd also engaged in. More red flags here, okay, telling me that it was basically selfish to love myself. A red flag right there, okay? No, I think it's important we all love ourselves before loving another, because if we don't, how the hell are we supposed to love another unconditionally, right? So that's the lesson I think that I've been spending my entire life trying to learn, because there was a time when I was really, really heavy, and I've been struggling with my weight again, that's no secret. Um, right now, it's not massive probably 17, 18 is where I am in my size, which is, it's big to some, true. And I'm happiest at, say, a size 10. So yeah, I'm obviously carrying extra weight. And that's no secret. A lot of people put others before themselves and they don't take care of themselves because their self-love takes a backseat. And I'm guilty of that. I'm guilty of that. I've loved others so much more than myself in my life that I forget myself a lot. And I'm trying to regain, reestablish who it is I am and how to love myself first, okay? But he and that red flag was telling me basically, put yourself in the background. I should be one. Number one to you should be me. He was literally telling me this. I mean, who could fault him? He had not healed. So who could fault him for this? But he really did love himself first. He understood. But he wanted to have that adulation that love, appreciation, and attention from others. He needed it from more than just myself. 
I think he was delving into lots of, lots of different women while he spoke to me and made me pretend, pre well, he pretended towards me that I was it. There was nothing else, right? But he said that he was going to be out of time. So either he had something going on that he couldn't tell me about or someone, I think it was someone or someone's. Long story short, he finally told me that Instagram models were calling his name, that he was partaking in relations with these girls that were something else. And I'm, I'm like, at that point, I'm like, okay, go to them, be with them. We're done. We're through. Leave me alone. And by the way, I told him he was a narcissist. Yes, he was a full-blown narcissist. I told him. I had been biting my tongue on it for a long time. I finally let it go. I just, I couldn't hold it in. But despite his illness, you know, being that way and having a lot of flaws within himself, and I had mine too. I'm not gonna say that I'm perfect. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not in any way perfect, okay? But I don't think he wanted to respect or see the flaws within himself. Whereas, this event had taken me into the dark shadow of self, so I was immersed in a whirlpool of 15, 16 months worth, just diving and delving into who am I, how I got where I was, and how it is I met him, because my vibration had to meet his. So I was vibrating on the same level as him. So yes, the wonderment of healing has hit me hard. I've gone through a move, a transition of self, introspection and I'm trying really hard to want to help others but until I really see myself fully I don't really want to help them too much because I don't want to take them down the you know that side of self-discovery until I understand things a little better so here I am just exploiting a little better uh, on what I can on my exploitation of my red flags and things that I should have not let myself down on in this relationship. Now, if he had been open to me being fully healed and well to help him, we might have had a beautiful relationship. I might have actually, you know, um, let's say forced my husband's hand a little better at letting me go because my husband, I had asked to release me get the documents going to end the relationship. In fact, I am exploiting a little more here now. I didn't force that because I started seeing the flaws in my twin, not really wanting me truly. So I let myself be uh, connected to my husband still. In fact, um, I'm exploiting this. My husband and I, we become more friendly through that. Not um, in a marital way, no, but more friendly because let's say uh, there were lines that were tried we had more about ourselves that we could discover I think he's gone into some self-discovery himself we're sort of um, soulmates I, I guess you could say and my twin had basically put me onto a trajectory of hating loathing my soulmate which I should not have and we could not align my soulmate, my husband, I should say, and myself. No, we couldn't, but that didn't mean I hated him. As a matter of fact, I loved him, and I told my twin this. My twin had thought that I'd been fornicating with my husband again, which I wasn't, but I kind of, I think, sent him mixed messages, and he might have believed I was, but I think he made lies up in his own mind, or somebody made him believe I was. But no, my celibacy has been strong, and... I am strengthening my sacral chakra so I can't share myself with anyone else. It is all mine and mine alone. Mine with the divine and the greater, you know, realms. But as far as I go, um, I've been through some challenging, heartbreaking times in the last 14, 15 months. And it's not all about my twin, my soulmate too. The story between both of them and myself, and myself. Me being the star in my own story, predominantly, okay? I don't know what the hell's happened to my twin, to be honest. I did try to sever ties with him via uh, 5D as well. But I'm not sure where that stands. I do think we have telepathic connection. 
I'm not certain. It could be sorcery. I do feel on that end of it, whether it be with him and his friends or him and his spouse, ex-spouse, whatever she may be, I do think they're sorcery. And I just denounced completely their connection to me. My ancestors are on it. So as far as where I'm concerned, it's all about healing at this point. The red flags I continue to watch for. I have boundaries. My connections of others has been nullified. I only allow to engage with those that I wish to partake with. I recently have cut myself free of um, other channels I was subscribed to. And then there was the few people who have spoken to me on my channel. If they're real and not imposters, I welcome their here, them and their ability to speak to me here. I do. I welcome it. And I'm not off-put by people as long as I'm not being tricked. Now, um, if there are people who are here on his behalf, my twin's behalf, because they think that I'm a threat, no, I'm not. I'm not looking for any kind of connection there. He severed that tie pretty good. He severed it finitely. He let me know that I was not important to him at all, ever, at any point. So I realized that it was a waste of time for me. And I let it go. I loved him dearly, but I think it was a one-way love. So I guess what I'm trying to say here is that the red flags I should have more examined. I should have listened to my intuition. It was stronger than I realized. And ultimately, I should have loved myself more and not thrown myself under the effing bus. That's what I did. So I will continue this on some more, um, but I won't be reading right away. And there are a lot of things I want to read. I am getting things ready to do that, but I am going introspective more so. So until we get closer to some more of these lunar events, which the last one that occurred was not real. You probably think I'm talking like a total bonker woman, but it's true. It wasn't real. And I knew it wasn't when it was coming up. I didn't speak on it because the woo-woo factors that I have to speak on, most people don't believe. So I don't really want to get into a headbutting um, thing with anybody. But I believed that it was something that was concocted. This whole event was not real. That last one was created. Man created, okay? So... I'm not sure how many of them have been, but that one certainly was. Um, the real giveaway for me was the Higgs man of the Boson and Higgs from CERN died supposedly the same day of the eclipse. Now, there was a plan for six hours previous to the eclipse occurring. They were going to have an event at CERN. This did not occur. The death instead happened. I believe this was a ritual. They harnessed the power of all the observers. So yes, it was energy harvesting. So you gotta beware. If you're gonna be involved in any of these events that there's a good chance you could be getting used. Your energy is important, so use your intuition. I wasn't meaning to bring this into the debate here, or this talk. It was mostly about my twin and how I didn't listen to my red flags, my own intuition. But from here on out, I am more keen and I'm inwardly understanding things more deeply so if you're here now thank you so much for listening and just pay attention to your intuition and yeah good luck to you if you're on the journey of the twin flame journey it is not easy and it is heartbreaking for many of us so that being said um this is tinker bt and for now take care be well